This is The Lay Witness with host Dwayne Lynch and music by Jim Fullinga. The Lay Witness is a program about people and their day-to-day -day walk with the Lord. Now, here is your host, Dwayne Lynch. Well, hi, everybody. I'm Dwayne Lynch. And I'm Jim Fullingham. And let us welcome you to this edition of The Lay Witness, and a very special edition, because we have a very special lady from Lubbock, Texas, and her name is Mary Baker. And, Be and Mary, welcome to the program, my Thank dear. You. Thank you. You know, because we've been friends at times uh, down over the last couple of years, and, and I know your witness, and I'm so excited uh, to have uh, um, you come and share with us some new things that Jesus is doing. I would, would like to say that even you have helped me uh, in arranging guests for radio programs and television. and So I'm happy that the people could meet Mary Baker in, uh, today. Before, uh, Mary, before we visit, we're going to ask Jim Fullingham to sing a song that has special meaning to you, as it does to all of us. But, uh, for, and for those of you that are watching, I think you'll find this song, one that will be a blessing to you. It's called Amazing Grace. His grace, folks, that will lead me home. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun. Maybe want to take this program in a different direction, uh, and maybe you feel led to, and, and we'll get to you. But you know, the song "Amazing Grace," uh, and you know, and I'm learning that uh, there are times whenever the sufficiency of God's grace—I hope I said that right—is all that there is, and it's amazing at His grace and His comfort. Mm -hmm. And you know this; you've been in the valleys and. Uh, that's why that song has special meaning to you. What's God been doing in your life? Maybe we'll get to that, but I just want to say that uh, I'm learning the sufficiency when nothing else seems to work occasionally. Right. You know, God's grace is sufficient. 
Right. That grace is so sufficient that it allows us and it, it gives us gives us a dare, a dare to, when we know that that grace is always there to meet us when we're doing God's work, we'll step out into new fields and we'll dare to do things that we wouldn't do ordinarily. And that grace is always there to meet our shortcomings where we fall short. Then God steps in with His grace and makes whatever, whatever job we're doing, makes it successful. Mary, there are people that say, well, this is well and good. They're probably even listening. But, uh, you know, let's get into your moccasins, so to speak. How, why do you know this to be true? Well, um, it'll be three years in April. In uh, April of 76, we lost a darling 14-year-old son. He was really the joy of our life. And in this, God had been preparing me for about two years. And he began to prepare me, and I didn't realize that's what he was doing. But see, I could look back, and then I could see that that's what God had been doing. He began to show me scriptures like, Precious in the sight of God is the death of his saints, his loving ones. And uh, in Isaiah, it talks about um, the godly person being taken away from the evil to come. And he enters into peace with God. And God began to show me all these scriptures on death, and he began to show me scriptures on strength, like my God has become my strength, and the joy of the Lord is my strength, and um, fear not, I will strengthen you and harden you to difficulties. We don't have to be afraid of those difficulties. God will strengthen us, and that grace will be there just when we need it. Okay, I began to have uh, understandings in dreams that if someone had told me in words, I would not have understood. But God began to show me what death means to him through dreams. And uh, I remember one particularly. I was in it, and I was walking down this long hall, and God said, Mary, it's time to go home. And I said, but I can't, can I tell my family goodbye, Daryl and the kids? And he said, it's time to go home. And he took my hand, and we walked off together. And that's all there was. That was death. I was going home to be with God. That's the way God looks at it, as a homecoming. Okay. So um, then our little boy was taken. And I, my father had been terminally ill, so I had presumed that God was maybe giving me some of these scriptures for my father and maybe some of these understandings to help my mother through this time that we knew was coming for her. But it, came, it turned out that it was for me. Uh, the morning of my little boy's service, I had prayed the night before that I knew there would be a lot of, of uh, teenagers at the service. They were dismissing those from school who wanted to go to the service. And so I knew that many of them had not been close to God and maybe had not been in church before. So I prayed, Lord, don't let this sacrifice be for nothing. You know, we want it to, we want his life to amount to something even in these last few hours. And so I prayed that the pastor, and he didn't know this, but I prayed that he would give an invitation for salvation. So God talked to him all night. Right? He wrestled. You know, you don't usually give a salvation invitation at a funeral. It's, it's unusual. And he had never done this before. So the day of the funeral, uh, he told us about it. And he said, I'm going to do something I haven't done before. And he said, I want those of you who would like to accept Jesus to pray this prayer with me. And then he prayed the prayer of salvation, and he asked those who had prayed with him to raise their hands. And about 60 teenagers raised their hands. So even, even in his death, his life was, witness, was a witness for Jesus. Just beautiful. You taught me once the meaning of, uh, what is it, Hebrews, uh, the throne of grace. What is it? Right. Well, but what is it in Hebrews? Okay. What's the verse? Uh, it's Hebrews 4.16. Okay, 4.16. I want to right. say it for, the, for people to have... I mean, they We're told to it. come boldly to the throne of grace to receive mercy and grace in time of need. And we don't receive that grace before we need it or we don't receive it after we need it. We receive it just when we need it. You know, uh, but it, it's, isn't it something how that even that, since you taught me, it really showed me that the throne of grace is our portion. It's like coming to the throne of whatever your portion should be. 
and this is grace. The, uh, and, uh, but back whenever you were sharing this with me in this way, I didn't really understand what that meant until mm -hmm. a valley experience that we're having. And, and uh, uh, now I, I, we can come to the throne of grace. Uh, and uh, it's beautiful. What else is happening? Uh, something, something I uh, would like to bring out is when we're in, when we're in very deep suffering, we need to guard against the tendency to become bitter, because when you're hurting yes. so bad, yes. it, it would be very natural to become bitter. And there's a scripture that tells us, you know, to guard against that bitterness, and I, I'm sure that's why, because God knew that it would, be, it, there would be a tendency to have that bitterness. And he, he warns us against it in his word, lest it defile many if we let that root of bitterness creep in. So any time we sense a little bitterness and resentment, just reject it. Say, no, my life is in God's hands. My children's life is in God's hands. My family's life is in God's hands. I will not have any bitterness. Now, that's good. You know, I, even I fight that. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and times I get bitter. Right. Uh, do you, do you know that I won't put you on the spot if you can't just say the scripture by verse, you know. Uh, uh, but where is that? I can tell you right fast. Well, you got it in a little note there? This time I brought it. It's Hebrews 12:15. Yeah. Because there are those that, that I know that are just very natural in this Christian life and, and that are struggling. We want to be perfect in the Lord and, you know, in right. our walk with Him. But there's times whenever we think, man, this is a, you know, right. this Christian life demands something. Demands our life. It certainly does. Yeah. Uh, also, some of the things that, if you're in a deep sorrow, some of the things that you can begin to do to begin the inner healing that sometimes takes as long as two or three years. People think you snap out of it in a couple of months. No, you don't. It's, it's a long day-by-day -day process that you go through to, be, to finally receive that acceptance, that turning loose, giving that person to God. He is theirs. Uh, when you wake up in the mornings, no matter what the circumstance is and no matter how you feel physically or emotionally, if you will say, soul, praise the Lord. Yeah. Soul, praise the Lord. No matter how I feel, no matter what it looks like. And you command, you can actually command your soul to praise God. The mind, will, and emotions. Right. Now. This is Psalms 104. And 104, that, 103. 103? 103? Yeah. Okay. Okay. It doesn't matter. You know, I just <laughs> suddenly, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Right. Forget not all his benefits. Uh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Right. Uh, also, something that, that my husband and I did, and this, this was very effective, and I uh, hadn't heard of it being done before, but I felt very impressed to anoint myself with oil and pray for myself. There was no one else there at the time, the morning of the funeral, and I was up early. And I received such strength from that that, that I, I anointed my husband and my other children with oil, and we all prayed together. And we didn't do this just once. My husband and I did this daily for many months just so that we would have the strength for that day to carry on. You anointed each other with oil and right. prayed for strength. Right. I've not heard you say that before. Uh, I heard later that um, I heard Oral Roberts talking on his TV show after his daughter had been killed that he and his wife anointed each other. And I thought, oh, I'm so glad someone else <laughs> was impressed to do that. <laughs> yes, yes. What does, that, uh, what does that do for you when you do this? Can you tell me? There is an inner strengthening that I do not really have a scripture for, but I know by experience there is an inner strengthening. It's like you, you take yourself off of your own hands. You put yourself into God's hands, and it's His responsibility how your day goes. That's good. What else you want to tell me? Um, well, every time we visit, there's all after we're through visiting, why there's always times yes. that we say, "Boy, I wish we had talked about this and that." So uh, uh, just also, reflect. Also, um, something about all parents and may all mothers, maybe fathers. We assume that our children are ours. <clears throat> it's my son, my daughter, it's my child. 
But really, and I really experienced this, they're not ours. They're loaned to us. They're God's. God gave a person, a lady in our church, a poem after my son was drowned that the last two lines of it really brought this home. And the last two lines were, Do not think that I did you wrong when I called my son home. But Mary, talk to me more about, about this because it, that's got to minister to people that understand what I'm trying to say. Right. Tell me your feelings here. I, do you just automatically come into this? It seems to be a leading of the Holy Spirit. I didn't, I didn't think about it on my own to go study it. I wouldn't have. It, you know, it wasn't that interesting. Also, uh, God gave me a real interest in the book of Job, and I had never even liked to read the book of Job. I had struggled through it maybe once, maybe twice. But God put me, after my son's death, he put me into the book of Job, and I began to see and feel how Job had felt. And I began to say, oh, there's someone who's felt this before. And it helps you to know that people before you have felt those kind of things, and you can read about them. And I found that there is a scripture for every need that we have. I know when, my, when I first heard, when someone first called me and told me that my son had drowned, I, I, I was just stunned. And the first words that came to my mind was, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. And I paused a few minutes. And I finally said, but blessed be the name of the Lord. Such strength. You know, we all can say, I release my child or ever who it is to the Lord. And there are, there are those of us who really want to do this, right. who really and truly want to but don't know how. Okay. It is a maturing process. You cannot do it overnight. You can say it and you can want to it, but it is a process that you mature into. Once you know about something, you know it's ahead of you, and you know that you can mature into it, and you begin to look for that. Okay. Talk to me some more. Okay. Get something else. Wayne, yes, let me, could I, oh, I don't want really to oh, interject please. here often, but I was just okay. sitting here thinking about my life and, and with uh, what Mary was sharing, and you were asking her some questions. Some of these things, as we sit here, now she's experienced the loss of her child, and... Uh, Really, we, we try to put ourselves in that. Well, I just don't believe I could take it, or I don't know how I could do it. But that scripture, God, His grace That's is the there when way. you need it, that time. And, you know, so it's something you can't just really be prepared for every minute. But when the time comes, God's grace is sufficient, His word. And, right. and then from then on, what I understand, where the growing process has taken place is since that point on, I, I, you have what God's been teaching you and growing you into is something amazing because I'm amazed every time I hear you, Mary, of, uh, of your strength and of your wisdom and of, of the teachings that God's given you since this time. But uh, uh, really, it'd be hard to explain across the people, I think. Uh, well, how can I face it if I'm going to say, really, you can't do that can't. And, and till that no. happens. You can't really be prepared, but God's grace uh, it will be sufficient and for that your, particular uh, time. Your song that you're going to sing is, is He Knew Me Then. Yeah. Isn't that it? That yeah. Title of the song he, that sing now? Yes, and he he knows he knew me then, and he knows me now. You know, he knew in the circumstance. Right whatever now, it is. right now, it's a love song. And why don't you sing that? All to right, us? let huh? me get your mic. I'll get my mic corrected. Yeah. Here's just Jim. He knew me then. He knows me now. And he died for me. Oh, he loved me then. He loves me now. Oh, how can it be? He saw my face. He knew the place I would be today. He knew me then. He knows me now, and he loves me. Some people say that he died one day, 
that was long ago they say well I'm sure that he was a very good man but me he did not know well listen my friends what I say is true that he knew me and he sure knew you he knew you then he knows you now and he loves you he knew you then he knows you now and he died for you he loved you then and he loves you He saw your face, he knew the place that you would be today. He knew you then, he knows you now, and he loves you. He knew us then, he knows us now. And he loves us still somehow. Thank you, Great. Jim. Thank you, Lord Praise Jesus. Lord. He loves us. Mary, talk to us about prayer. Okay, this was one of the things uh, that the Lord showed me that would give me strength during this time. I would, I would pray in the Spirit. You know, we're told that we can build up ourselves by praying in the Spirit. Well, I just took this very literally, and I needed it desperately, and so I would pray in the Spirit. A lot and lots of the time, that, that's what I would be doing, maybe just quietly to myself, or if I was alone in the house, out, out loud to God. Um, also, the prayers uh, of the people around me. I knew, I was very conscious of the people who were holding me up in prayer. And I also knew about the time that they stopped. And it, it, it was amazing because I hadn't experienced anything like this before, mm. that you would actually feel their prayers lifting you and holding you up. And then after a few months, they assume that you're over it now, and they let up on their prayers. And, and I really felt this, and I, I, I mentioned it to some of them, you know, no, you don't stop now. <laughs> well, mama. It, it, was, it was really amazing. Also, uh, something else I don't think I've mentioned before, the power in the name of Jesus. Sometimes I would be so low and I would be in such emotional pain that all I could say was Jesus. And I'd say, oh, Jesus. And there would be such power in that. And I found a scripture on that. <laughs> it says... Um, the Lord uh, is a tower. Let's see. The name of the Lord is a tower, and the righteous run into it and are safe. Mm -hmm. The name of the Lord. It's in, it's in Proverbs. Mm -hmm. Can you be, can, do you remember where in Proverbs I need I that? I can find it. Well, that's <laughs> after the program. Now all these poor people are going to be running through Proverbs. Right. Oh, but that's beautiful. So that, that was really a blessing to me, too. Yes. yes. Also, um, something else that, that was really a blessing to me the year after the, the anniversary of a tragedy like this, it's a very trying time. And people that haven't been through it don't realize it. But one girl brought a potted, no, she sent a, a card just about that time. And my pastor came by on that anniversary. And I thought, well, what's he doing here? You know? But he had remembered, and he knew what a hard day that the anniversary of a, of a tragedy is. And, uh, you know, if we would remember people who are close to us, if we'd remember that day and maybe send them a card or maybe drop by for a visit, you don't have to say anything about it. Just be there. Right. right. I know this is what, at this time in, in my life that, uh, and there are probably those that have heard me mention two or three times in visiting with you, that, that we're kind of in a valley experience. My wife is very ill, and so that will explain to you what's on my heart right now. But 
the the people who who just come to love right. and to listen they're not maybe quoting any scriptures or anything mm -hmm. like this but they're just there to love you and to uh, uh, be a friend Show in the you Lord that they care. You know, our guest today has been uh, Mary Baker from Lubbock, Texas, and if you would like to uh, visit with uh, Mary uh, around the country, if you'd like to call her in Lubbock, Texas, uh, your husband is Daryl. Is it listed as Daryl Baker mm -hmm. in the telephone directory in Lubbock? And uh, give Mary a call. Jim, let's just take just a couple of minutes. I'm sorry, folks. I hate to waste the time that's so precious, but if I don't mention we need financial help, mail just drops off. And uh, I hate to take this time, and I wished we didn't have to, but it's not easy to stay on the air. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and if we do not receive your contributions, and it's almost a week-to-week -week thing, uh, please consider us. In the conclusion of the program, you'll find our mailing address there, and we'd appreciate it so much. We know the ministry. We know what it can do. We know it can, how it can bless your life, and uh, we know that it is a blessing in your life. Jim. Talk to me for a minute. Talk to that camera for a minute or so. About, well, uh, uh, Dwayne, uh, money. Just, uh, you've already said it just as good as you can say it. It's just that it does take uh, money and finances to put on God's programs. And we do so appreciate the ones that have mailed in and, and have yes. con uh, sent their contributions. And it's beautiful, and we appreciate that. But if God finds a spot in their heart and tugs at them, just send, it, send a check on in, and we'll put it to good use to glorify the Lord. This program is designed for only one thing, and that's to glorify the Lord that's right. Jesus. That's right. So uh, we appreciate what you know, they sent in. And we do get mail from all over, but I want to tell you, uh, those precious people, you, you folks down there in Florida, you're just blessing our lives. Uh, Fort mm -hmm. Walton Beach, and oh my goodness, I can't name all the places, and in Kansas, uh, must be the Bible Belt in Kansas, we appreciate <laughs> your letters, and the North Dakota, in the Dakota area, and Iowa in there. Uh, thank you so much for your mail and your support. By the way, I don't want to leave out uh, Kentucky or Tennessee, somewhere over in there. Uh, we film these programs in Dallas. That's what you can say over and under and around. But uh, thank you so much for your support. But for those of you that have not uh, considered giving to this ministry, I would appreciate it if you would today. Sit down and write out a check. And it takes big dollars, folks. We're being bounced off of that satellite around, and it takes money to do this. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mary, once again, you've been such a blessing. We're just about in the close of this thing. and uh, In fact, we've got about 15 seconds there waving little cards around. And thank you. Jim, your songs today were just beautiful. and You know, God really does love us. See you next week. Bye-bye. The Lay Witness with Dwayne Lynch is supported by private contributions. Write The Lay Witness. Post Office Box 3550, Lubbock, Texas, 79452. Your contribution will be greatly appreciated. Thank you for joining us this afternoon, and be watching for the next Lay Witness.